now that we've got everything, we've tested it, we made sure we're in the right environment, we've troubleshot our issues, we've done some tuning, we've really made sure that everything is gonna work great, exactly how we want it. How do we maintain? So we've got things like the report manager, uh, which Paul Martel did a great webinar on. You can see that at our YouTube channel. Um, we also have insight reports. Now these insight reports are an opt-in weekly PDF mailing. Or if you log into your portal account, you can see the kind of looks like a, a solar system map that says get insight. That's right on the front page of your portal. Right when you log in, go about a third of the way down the page and you'll see that bright blue icon there. These reports are some of the most useful reports that we can get for forecasting and planning. Now here's some examples from a test cluster. Um, now on the top right, if you have a highly consumed snap or dedupe pool and you're not really sure why, take a look at your insight report. The insight report will tell you the top pool consumers by app and by host. So if you've got, uh, we'll go back to the SQL instance that was misreported. You expected it to be a 100 gigabytes, Turns out it's 1024, it's actually a terabyte. That will sit right at the top of this list. So if you've got your own audit of how much space these SQL instances need, you can use this list to see how many gigabytes or terabytes they're actually using on disk in the Actifio system. Uh, it's a good way to kind of plan for expansion. It's a good way to just a sanity check to make sure that we are ingesting what you think we're ingesting. Um, if you see a spike here, that could let you know that maybe we saw a database re-index. Um, a machine had to be completely restored and all the data had to be rebuilt and it basically was a, a new ingest. Now over here on the left, that orange line is my dedupe pool and that blue line is my snap pool. Um, so what I've, what I've done here is I've actually just filled a dedupe pool with data that cannot be deduped or compressed. So as we can see, it keeps growing. Um, and I did this for a purpose so we can see each one of these vertical lines represents 30 days. So in 30 days, our DDoP pool went up about 20 terabytes. Now I've looked at hundreds of these reports over the years, and I can consistently tell you exactly when that pool is gonna fill. I can get it right down to the week. And so can you. Uh, if we were to take a ruler and lay it down on the beginning and end point of this plotted line on this graph, it's going to intersect at a date down the road. Now I can tell you in this case, this cluster will be completely full by the second week of April. And that's okay because we've looked at it in the third week of March. We've still got three weeks to add disk. We're not in trouble, we're okay. Uh, so I would really, like I said, these come out weekly. I look at them once a week uh, because they will, you'll see patterns like this, you'll see trends. Um, and it really, it lets you know that you are pushing enough work to get all the value out of the appliance, but not pushing so much that it's gonna cause problems. I'll show you that here. So on the left, we've got a, a slightly longer pool history here. And as we can see, we're, we're using a lot of space, but am I worried? No, I'm not worried. Why am I not worried? Because I can, I can track the storage trend. We can see that, that beautiful sawtooth pattern. We see applications come in, they hit their one week retention, and then they get expired out. And on the dedupe side, we see data come in, those little spikes that you see, that's the moments before a GC and a sweep runs. And you see the backside of that slope where it drops down, it almost looks like an EKG pattern. That is after the GC and sweep runs. Now the reason it doesn't drop straight down and it kind of comes off as an angle is because you'll actually reclaim space as sweep is running. Uh, you reclaim most of the space that you're going to get in the first 50%. Uh, we don't make you wait until sweep is 100% done and then just give you it all back in one package. We'll give you back gigabytes at a time as we're going through and cleaning things up. But using this chart on the left, I can kind of, again, just drop a ruler across those peaks. And the last report here is March 1st. Uh, I happen to know how big this pool is. This pool is going to be full on about April 8th. Um, now, wouldn't it be great when you're doing uh, your, your budgets for the quarter, you're doing your forecasting, your storage expansion, if you could walk in to your manager and say, I'm okay until April 1st. However, sometime in the next eight days, the system is going to reach 100% consumption and we need to get disk. Let's get that disk today. Let's never let it get to that point. And using these insight reports, you can get a very accurate, accountable storage consumption trend so that you're able to proactively add storage, add space, make the adjustments needed. You know, maybe you have two skies, 
one's doing 90% of the work, the other one's doing 10. Maybe you don't need any storage. We can just migrate some apps and kind of balance them out. Another way we can check that is we'll take a look at the picture on the right here. Ensure Sky is processing enough jobs and track you for expansion. Now, what we're seeing here is slot consumption. Now, each job, snap, dedupe, remote dedupe, uh, even expirations, all require one job slot. We can do about 16 things at once, as you can see by that purple line on the top. And I love this report. As we can see, these spikes are almost touching that 16, but then they dive right back down. That tells me that we've got this particular Sky instance tuned about perfectly. It's using, you're, you're getting every dollar that you spent. We're using 95% of the available compute and slot resources, but we're not exceeding it. You're not hitting errors, you're not hitting failures, you're not ending up with jobs and extended queue times. We've really got this dialed in absolutely perfect and you're getting every penny of your investment out of this. If we looked at this and everything was down around five or six, absolutely, let's put more data on there. Now, if it was pinned, if it was just a flat orange line that ran parallel across that 16 bar up here at the top, then obviously we're over consumed. We're gonna wanna add another sky. Um, and now this comes into kind of our different sky use cases. In some cases, the data warehouse kind of model makes sense. Let's put a huge pool behind a single sky instance. Uh, data protection is the perfect example of this kind of use case. And we're just gonna send all of our data at that huge sky pool. And let's say we've got 50 users. Great, 50 users all using the same sky pool. Everything's protected, everything's wonderful. If you wanted something that was maybe more agile than you could really get out of a data protection model, what might make sense for you is instead of buying one sky at 50 terabytes, buy 10 skies at five terabytes or five skies at 10. Five skies at 10 terabytes, now you've only got five users using each one. And so when you look at these charts in the insight report, if you're really pinned out, you maybe, maybe the answer is not add storage. If your consum storage consumption is looking okay, but you're running out of slots, what we really need is another Sky appliance to add another 16 slots with a job throughput there. And again, you, you know, in the past, uh, and, and I've, I've been working in this space for well over a decade, the data warehouse model is prevalent. Let's get a single piece of storage or a single cluster of storage and just add and add and add and add and add. That's not necessarily the right answer anymore. The industry has changed, the way that we use data, the way that we serve data, all these things are different. And with a virtual appliance, Sky doesn't take any room in the rack. We don't have to worry about whether we've got the cooling for it. We don't have to worry about drops for electrical power. All we need to do is carve out a VM. And so because of that, we don't have some of the drawbacks. If you were to put 10 CDSs in, you would need 30U worth of space, all kinds of wiring, all kinds of redundant power. Uh, you would really need to check with the HVAC people to make sure that you had the proper cooling. With Sky, we take zero U. You might need to add a compute node if you're putting a lot of Skies in there. Okay, so maybe maybe two U if you really need to beef up your, your virtual environment. But now we can make these smaller, less expensive, more agile Skies available to multiple users rather than just putting this one monolithic entity into the data center that everybody uses. We can really deploy these and it really, MDL is, is what we really care about. We don't really care, you know, whether it's five 10 terabyte Skies or 150 terabyte sky, that's still 50 terabytes MDL, no matter how you slice it. So if it works better for you and your users to run five 10 terabyte skies, consider that solution. Uh, try to break away from that kind of data warehouse mindset that has been around for, for decades. Uh, that single monolithic one piece of storage that everybody accesses is no longer the right solution. And with sky, with the different offerings, with dedupe, without dedupe, database only, uh, five terabytes, one terabyte, 50 terabytes. You can really custom your solution to exactly what those users want. And again, the MDL doesn't change. It's the exact same MDL, whether you're using five really agile ones or one big monolithic one, the numbers stay the same. Thank you for joining us for another YouTube Tech Tip video. If you like the content you're seeing on this channel, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you will be alerted to any future content.